Hi, welcome back to my rug cook and talk show. Okay, so my name is Annette and I've been a rug cooker for over 20 years, for those of you who don't know me. Um, and just so I can give a little quick introduction, I hook on an Anderson frame, which is kept here in the corner. So if anybody wants information, just Google Anderson uh, rug frames and up the information will come. I believe he's out of Maryland. So how is everybody? I haven't been at hooking as much. Um, I try, but it's just been a really busy uh, time of the year for me. A lot of snow, a lot of shoveling. It's actually snowing again as we speak. And um, just trying to make the best of it. What else could we do? So, you know, some hot cocoa and a glass of wine at night or maybe some popcorn. There's not much you could do when there's snow out there. So um, just stay safe for those of us in the New England area. I think I heard Nova Scotia is getting hit with a big blizzard over this weekend. So um, all the best to you. Stay safe. And uh, one of the members on RugHookingDaily.ning um, from our group, a fellow rug hooker member, um, wanted some help with finishing her rug. So I saved this part to do on the show so I can kind of just uh, steer you in the direction I'm going with my finishing. This is the back of my little happy rug. I'll show you the front again. Uh, it came out so so cheerful and bright. I love it. Um, it was it was nice, you know, to change off from rug to rug on what you're hooking is kind of uh, just a fun thing because you you don't want to bore yourself. I mean, unless you love working with a certain color, I just find changing it up just um, can sometimes take you out of the funk. Or if you're in a funk because you don't know what to do, try something new. Just try something new uh, that's easy and fun just to get you back into hooking, um, as opposed to a very well-planned, carefully thought-out rug, which can sometimes stress you out. So, uh, this is not supposed to stress you out, so just keep that in mind. So, I just want to quickly uh, just uh, say that this is pinned, and in a little while we'll go over um, what I'm going to be doing with that. The front had the sewn uh, twill tape on there, if you could see. It's kind of hard. It's black, so I just want to try to show you. It's black on black. And... Um, yeah, so that's what I'll be working on. And i got a few other new things I just want you to show you. And so grab a cup of coffee, grab a cup of tea, uh, get something warm, get something cool, and get comfortable for the next 20 minutes or so. If you're hooking, go ahead and uh, get in your comfy spot, your nice chair, wherever you're rug hooking, and just um, enjoy the next 20 minutes of alone time and doing what you're doing. I've got a nice hot cup of coffee here, and um, okay, so I have a few things to tell you, and um, one of them is, and you know what, up here in New England, we're desperate for spring, so I get a magazine called Victoria, and um, I don't know what else to tell you about it, but that it's beautiful. It's absolutely one of my most favorite magazines. Uh, it's not geared to any specific decor even though the name is Victoria it's more about decorating it deals a lot with uh, traveling and and just showing you something very relevant uh, to whatever subject is the theme of the magazine that month and it, it's beautiful it takes you to England it takes you to France to Paris to Tuscany it takes you to, to all over Ireland it takes you into the States so it's it's a great magazine to just read in the winter to kind of get you out of the doldrums, so to speak. Um, the pages are beautiful. There is color on every page. Every page is color. Um, you know what? I'm not a great big, per se, reader of text in magazines. And I love this because there's very little text to read. And what's there is very quick and informative. And they have the best recipes. And... Um, all I'm going to say is you will love this magazine. Uh, for all you Downton Abbey uh, fans out there, it, it lends itself a little to that. But the decorating goes all over with, with decorating. There's a little country. There's a little rustic. There's uh, Victorian. There's a lot of embroidery work and quilts and um, just stuff like that. And, and really wonderful desserts. You know, there's a coconut cake in here. And it's, it's just begging for me to, like, 
make it. So that looks like something that's coming up. It does have a nice uh, excerpt every month on women that, sorry men, but your wife could be one of these wonderful women, that uh, create. There's women creators. Every single episode, uh, profiles and spotlights. An entrepreneur uh, on the creative end, whether she's doing fabrics, she's designing fabrics or textiles or yarns or jewelry. There's something in here for everyone. Um, I'm just going to say, if you do get this magazine, if you subscribe to it, it's even cheaper. It's uh, page 37. I can't show you because of the whole copyright thing, but page 37 just makes me so happy. I want to sing when I see this page. So I just want to tell you, it'll brighten your day up. And this one is the spring issue. It comes out every two months, and this will be displayed on the newsstands till 4.13. They also show gardens. Um, it just a little of everything. It doesn't, you know, expand too much on one subject. It just, everything in here is beautiful and fun to look at and very, just makes you dreamy when you read this. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking for a little lift uh, or you want to get something for your significant other, uh, that that is into this sort of thing this is a great magazine so that being said what else did I just want to share uh, Valentine's Day is coming up here I don't know if it's celebrated around the world but it's very big in uh, in the States and I just want you to remember I kept this from last year I had received this with some candy in it obviously it's all gone and, but look it's a great template for a heart and if you notice when you get these little hearts, whether you give them to your children uh, or, you, you know, you just, you get them yourself, the, the heart shapes are all a little different, which is really cool. So if you wanted to do a rug with different heart shapes, here they go. I mean, I know this is a big one, but then there's a smaller one and then there's mid-size. So these are great templates. Keep them. This one happens to be metal and I kept the little thing in there. So if you wanted to put your bobbins or pins or if you're beading and you want to keep beads in here uh, whatever you know it, it works for you but it's also a great template so um, both ends work the top and bottom as a template so there's that okay um, and if you're just tuning in uh, I'm a member of rughookingdaily.ning and we have a little group on there called the YouTube rug hooker rug hooker group and um, join up if you want to just hear our little uh, conversation or questions that we have and or just be a fly on the wall there that's fine too and we always have some interesting topic going and there's a lot of new hookers on there and uh, I'm an old hooker so um, I try to just share what I know about rug hooking uh, with all of you guys who are out there and maybe not part of a group so we are uh, solo we started out solo but now we kind of have this little uh, nice group and um, we can join in at any time you can run these videos whenever you want and just know that there's others watching them and we're also connecting on rughookingdaily.ning I also have a blog http slash slash let's hook at uh, dot wordpress.com and on there uh, I don't say anything you know out of the ordinary but I do post pics for you to see of the things I'm working on. Uh, it's just to kind of uh, give you a, more of a time to look at something or study it. And if I've uh, brought up a, a magazine or a book review or a movie, I love to do movie reviews, um, it'll be on there. So uh, just rest assured if you missed it and you don't remember which show, I'm always posting them on the blog. So uh, go ahead and uh, look that up. For more info so I did a little dyeing yesterday because I'm working on a new rug so I'm gonna share the new rug with you and then try to get in some of this stitching for uh, one of our members there but I had started a new a new little mat and you know I've never done a bird so and I love birds so I said let me see about doing a little bird design so here we go. I'm going to pull this off for now. Let's just see. I've got a little cork board up here so I could um, just pin stuff up and look at it. 
and, and get a look at it. You know, I put it on the floor, I, but kind of I like it up there now. And if I see little rug designs or something that inspires me, my little rug inspirations, I can pin it up there and study it and postcards, uh, people, you know, little thank you cards from the people that we buy, that I buy from, heaven to Betsy and all that. Um, they send little fun little postcards, so I'm posting them up there too. And uh, there you go. So um, I, I started this little design. It's just a simple little bird uh, with some leaves. And um, I did that. And then I, so this is for those of you who are looking, how do you transfer that, Annette? Okay, so you made it up. You uh, have it on a piece of paper. I then got my nylon tool. And you probably can't see it because it's, let's see if I could do it like that. There you go. Uh, just so you could see that there's something written on there. Okay. Um, I transferred it to the nylon tool. And how did I do that? Because it moves a lot. So what I did was I take it and I had it on, it was on a pad. So let me grab that for you. I work on a pad only because it's thick. And if you have a, a, a you could also use a, a nice big, uh, what do you call those? Those clipboards. Uh, okay, so you can get a clipboard and it will do the same thing. It will keep it in place. If you can find a nice big one, uh, that would work really good. And that might be my next venture is to find a big clipboard. But basically what I did was I just clipped it around. I have a few of these little clips. You know, they're not very strong. I don't particularly like these all that much, so I like these little guys in the corner here better. So I just clipped the tool over the design and traced. That's it. Just for those of you who think it's a big, uh, you know, a complicated thing, it is not. You just cut your thing down. Okay, so then I did that. Let me put this away over here. I did that, and then got my back stuck. And then I took it and I pinned that nylon to my, my, my backing. Okay. Let's see. Can you see? Okay. And then I draw it on here. What I did add was I centered that and then I added the little edges, the little fingers or whatever you want to call them little edges on each side. So this will be a little longer mat. And it's just something I wanted to do with a bird. And that's it. So I'm getting fabric ready. And I wasn't sure what kind of fabric to do. So let me just put this over here. So I had some yellow. And I have a, a lot of it. It's like a mustardy color. I have this mustardy color. It's really nice. It's very warm looking and cozy and it, it's a very nice, your typical door mill wool and it is uh, really nice to hook with. And I had a lot of it, but I, I didn't really know if I liked this yellow color all that much. So I went ahead and I took my cocoa brown writ dye. I know everybody in rug cooking world is probably screaming like, no, she didn't use writ dye. Yes, I did. I did use Rick Dye. So um, I did three pieces and I'll show them to you. Okay. Okay, that's the first piece. Then I did a little piece. It has little darker pieces. Little, uh. Okay, so here we go. And we have that last piece. And so what I did was I scrunched these in the bottom of my, my big old lobster pot. And I've showed you that in the past, so I won't show it again. But so just so you could see, it started out like that. And it ended up like that, just from some writ dye. And what did I do with the writ dye? I poured a small amount in a mason jar that I keep all my rug hooking dyeing stuff together. And I diluted it and I just started pouring it around the top. I poured it around enough so it gave me an effect that was a little bit heavier in some areas, not so much in the other. And then I low simmered it. And I low simmered it so it wouldn't agitate the hot water in the dye so much as to spread all over. And if you put a lot of uh, fabric in that pot, it 
it doesn't spread into all the nooks and crannies if there's not a lot of dye in there. So it gives you that effect. So go ahead and scrunch it in. If you want a flat color, obviously, then you keep it nice and flat and you put a lot of water and even amount of dye and you make sure everything's covered. You can agitate it to make sure it's all covered. And that was it. So I've got some, some of that and I think I'm going to use that in the background of the next rug that I work on. So just wanted to share that with you. And that's what's uh, going on here. That's what's happening. So uh, that was cocoa brown. And there's a few other tones of brown that I like also. I have a tan. And that works really nice if you want to age like a white. So if you get like a cream or an off-white, there's a color called tan of Rit dye. And gosh, it just ages it almost. Tea gives it almost an orangey effect. And I don't like that all the time. But the tan on Rit gives it like this perfect gray-brown aged look. So it's really nice. So I just wanted to share that with you. And um, okay, so we're going to get over here to our my little rug. Let's see if I could. I don't know if it really matters if I could see this or not. But okay, so it's all pinned into place, if you could see that. And um, I'm going to start slip stitching it. Now that's it. I just do a double. Uh, this is not a double. There we go. Okay, pull down. And I just start stitching. That's it. It's a slip stitch all around the edge. And it's, I pin it into place so that it holds well as, uh, as I'm stitching. And I'll usually start at the bottom where it's, it's doubled up. And like I said, it's kind of hard for you to see because we're black against black, but it's the twill tape is over there doubled up. And um, everything's pinned. And basically, it's a very simple procedure to just start doing it. You might even want to use a thimble. Uh, sometimes I find going through certain certain rugs that I've hooked, for some reason, they were very hard to, uh, well, they're all the same, but I just felt maybe the needle I was using wasn't good, and I felt it wasn't going through very easily, and there was some definite tugging. Um, so, yeah, you might want to use a little thimble. I have a few here when it starts feeling like it's getting a little too much. And that's it. You hook, you, you try to, I do at least, uh, as you're stitching this, as you're slip stitching this, I'm going to try to hold it up again so you can see. As you slip stitch it along, right, you want to try to grab the linen backing. At least I do. I, I don't want to just grab uh, onto a hooked loop because, you know, I just find it, it'll hold much better um, in place if it's actually into the linen backing. Uh, so you want to try for that. And that's it. You're just doing a little slip stitch coming up at the very edge of that twill tape close to uh, the hooked rug. Uh, you could see I'm doing right there's the edge. So, you know, it kind of just blends in. And that's it. You knot it. I just make a knot, fold it back and forth and you know stitch back and forth a few times to lock that stitch into place and start again and I find it to be the easiest method to finishing a rug because I've done I've done the bound edge rug and for those of you who don't know what that looks like you know what I'm gonna grab my rug that I did on that I'll be right back I don't want to be off the camera too much for you. Okay, so here you go. Now, I'm sure this is all very familiar to you guys, <laughs> but this um, was done. Look at that. There's still a little pin in it. <laughs> How funny is that? There's a little pin still in there. Okay, so as you can see, this is an edge that's finished and bound. Uh, this one was done. Okay, I'll show you how this one was done. As you can see, there's no twill tape on here. And if you want to eliminate the twill tape, you can by rolling up the edge. You just leave it about an inch uh, when you cut the edge of your rug. You leave about an inch of it all around after your stitch line. I, I always stitch around the edge of my rug 
right at the border of it is, is always a stitching line to hold the linen from unraveling. Um, you would then just fold that like a half inch or and a half inch and it makes a little edge and that you you can bind all around real quick with a whip stitch or people pin it into place. I think I pinned mine. I hate stitching. But um, yes, and then you just bind it. You just start binding it close to the edge and that's the front and that will be the back. And that's it. You know, it, it, it's not, it, it's gonna, you keep moving around. Nothing is perfectly perfect. I mean, understand that. Yes, some people get it to look wonderful, um, but it, it's hard when you're hand doing something and it's not a machine. I think this came out pretty good. And there's our little horse guy. There you go. So that's what that would look like for those of you who have not seen that up close and personal. There it is. I also did that. Uh, I did an edge a little different on my green rug, um, the very first rug. Oh, I've got a picture of it right here. I'm not going to pull that out. It's packed away. But um, this had the piping, uh, the cord piping on there and, um, and the twill tape. That was like the full, the full Monty on that one. So uh, that's what I saw in the magazine and that's what I did. I didn't realize there were other ones that could be done. So uh, basically that's it. So that's it. See, it's already like six inches done. And it goes by very quick, and it is a very easy method to finishing the rug. I love it. I use it on all of my rugs now, and I enjoy doing it. It's a very gentle stitch that just keeps going on and on, and that's basically it. So for those of you who are, uh, again, in the Nova Scotia area, I, I just hope everybody stays safe and um, enjoy your rug hooking. For those of you in the Boston, Massachusetts area. Wow, you guys are just getting slammed with snow. So I am sorry to hear that. And I'm in the Connecticut area and we're not far behind as I'm watching the snow fall again. So uh, just, yeah, just keep busy and um, this will pass, this will pass. Get your hands on the, this, this, this latest issue of Victoria. And this is the kind of magazine that you can keep and you don't have to throw it away because I have issues from Victoria that are probably, I don't know, eight years old. They had went away from production for a while. They stopped making the magazine. And people uh, like myself and many others, I'm sure, wrote and wrote and wrote. And a few years later, they came back. And so this magazine is even better than before. So definitely get your hands on it and enjoy it. Um, you will. You will love it. it. You know what? Even some local libraries carry it, so if you want to just check it out, you could. Um, yeah, they'll even send you a, a magazine to, to look at, I think, if you, you uh, go online or call them up. So uh, that's it for today. I just wanted to share that. Um, if you're out there and you're still having trouble finishing your rug, drop me a comment on Rug Cooking Daily and I'll see if I could help you. But otherwise, it's pretty straightforward and there's you know, no magic to it. Just just do it and get it done and eyeball it. And as you're doing it, you might have to, you know, re uh, reevaluate and um, just move it around a little and it'll, it'll be fine. Readjust it and that sort of thing. So uh, I bid you farewell. Stay well and happy hooking.